everyone. In this video, I'm just going to really briefly talk about line integrals, surface integrals, and volume integrals. Now, the only way to really get a good grasp of these is to look at examples and then work through problems on your own. Uh, I'm not going to do either of those things in this video. I'm just going to give you a quick review of them and, and hopefully remind you a little bit of conceptually sort of what's going on with these different types of integrals. All right, so we'll start over here with the line integrals. So we want to take an integral from some point to generally some other point, so from A to B, of a vector field dotted with DL. All right, and we could also consider, uh, and I'll mention a very common notation, where we take this line integral of our vector field dotted with a DL with our displacement um, around a closed loop. And this is very common notation. So here you can imagine we're going from like point A back to point A. And, and this is how we would denote that to remind us that it's, it's a closed loop. Uh, and of course, generally speaking, you're going to need to specify what path you're taking. So this, in physics, an example that should be familiar to you is computing the work, where you take the integral of f dot dl. All right, and one thing that you might remember is that uh, there are special forces where computing this work is path independent, and those are said to be conservative forces. So this is a place where this is very important in physics. So classifying line integrals, which turn out to be path independent, um, turns out to be a very important concept in fix physics because it leads to forces um, which are conservative and therefore you could associate some, some conserved quantity with, with that force. Um, and so to, to finally, just to give you a picture of what we're doing here, which maybe will better help you understand this, I'll just draw a little plot and I'll just stick to two dimensions. And we're imagining that we have some vector field, which of course is defined everywhere. I'm just gonna, I know this looks like a uniform vector field, but it doesn't really matter. It can be any vector field you like. All right, so what are we doing when we take this line integral? And I'm gonna stop, you get the idea, right? Uh, if we take our line integral and we go from some point A to some other point B, along our path, we can consider tiny little displacements, which will be tangent to our path. If I could draw this properly. So these little vectors along here would represent our little tiny DL displacements. And as we go along this path, you can imagine at each point you're taking the dot product with the vector field evaluated at that same point. And then we're summing, right? The integral you can think of as a sort of a continuum limit of a sum, right? We're summing up all of these little dot products at each, at each point in, in space. Right, so that, that's what's going on with a line integral. Again, to get good at actually doing line integrals, you need to actually do some, some examples. All right, what about surface integrals? Here we're going to integrate over some surface, which again, you need to specify what that surface is, of some vector field dotted with now with some area. All right, and what is going to be the direction of our little infinitesimal area element? So this will point perpendicular to our surface, S, which that's ambiguous. If we just have some surface, like, I don't know how well you can see the sheet of paper. If we just have some surface, you could imagine a vector perpendicular to the surface, but is it coming up this way or down that way? That's actually a convention that you need to decide. There's not, that's not predetermined. You need to say what you mean by the positive direction. All right, so this little, our infinitesimal area vector is going to point perpendicular to our surface. Then again, we could take our dot product. Similar here, we could consider 
taking a surface integral over a closed surface, and we'll use this same notation. So this is a closed surface integral, again, over our vector field dotted with our infinitesimal areas over our surface. In this particular case, um, there is a convention. So here the convention, which is standard, um, is that out, outward. So if we have a closed surface, you're imagining like a sphere. Um, if we have the sphere as our surface, then going out from the sphere is the positive direction. Right? When it's a closed surface, then there's you know, a clear distinction between things moving outward from the closed surface or into the closed surface. And the convention is that we'll take outward to be positive. If we just have a sheet, we don't have a closed surface, the convention isn't so clear, so then you have to specify. Again, um, I'll draw a picture just to make this hopefully maximally clear. We have um, x, y, z, we're in three-dimensional space. And then we have some surface, which I'll try to draw, right, which lives um, in this three-dimensional space. So this is our surface S. And we're going to integrate over that surface. Here, the example I'm drawing, it looks like it's not closed, right? It's just like, again, like this sheet of paper, perhaps. And then when you do this integral at every point on your surface, uh, you can define some little, you can take a little DA area, taking a little infinitesimal area on our surface, and then the direction that we're going to associate with this infinitesimal area is perpendicular um, to, to the surface, and um, which hopefully you can see in this lovely three-dimensional picture of mine. Um, and again, here it looks like I'm choosing, by drawing that I'm choosing sort of upward in this z direction to be the positive direction. I could have chosen downward to be the, the positive direction, and you just need to specify some convention and then stick to it. All right, so those are surfaced integrals. And finally, we're left with volume integrals. We can take two types of volume integrals. We could first consider taking the volume integral of a scalar function. So here we're going to integrate over some volume of, uh, I'll use t for my scalar function, or scalar fields, if you like. Uh, and then d tau here is some infinitesimal volume element. Right? So we're integrating over a whole volume, no longer, you know, here we had a line, an area, and now we're integrating over a volume. In Cartesian coordinates, this volume element is very nice. So in Cartesian, d tau is simply dx, dy, dz. It'll be much more complicated when we consider uh, different coordinate systems, and we'll have to be a lot more careful. But in Cartesian, it's simply that. We could also consider taking uh, a volume integral over a vector field. So again, we're integrating over some volume now of some vector fields, which again can be a function of x, y, and z, generically speaking, times d tau. What do I really mean by that? Right? We can, if we're working in Cartesian coordinates, we could write our vector in Cartesian coordinates. So this is v sub x, x hat, plus v sub y, y hat, plus v sub z, z hat, d tau. And one of the nice thing, things about Cartesian coordinates are x hat, y hat, and z hat are constant vectors. And so we can just break up this integral and pull those out. So this is actually equal to x hat integral over our volume of the x component of our vector fields, uh, d tau, plus the same thing in the y direction and the z direction.
when we start to work with uh, perhaps spherical coordinates or cylindrical coordinates, then these things are going to get a little messier because your unit vectors there are no longer constant. So they can't just be pulled out of the integral the way we have here. Then Cartesian, they are constant. Um, so these things really simplify a lot. All right, so those are the basics of line integrals, surface integrals, volume integrals. To learn how to really do them, we're going to need to look at some examples, and you're going to need to power through some examples. Thank you.